Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So has there ever been a time where you feel like you really just want a blaster that does everything at the same time? You want a blaster that is semi-automatic, that shoots full-length darts, half-length darts, 120 FPS, 150 FPS, even more FPS than you can imagine. You're able to switch it out, and it tells you exactly what it's doing at the same time. I'm sure everyone, at least once, has wanted that blaster. Here it is. This is one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my entire life. It's called Phase 1, and it really does everything. So this blaster was originally commissioned by Phase 1 Foam, and obviously you can see it says Phase 1 on it. Who else is it going to be? And it is basically set out to accomplish one goal. Do everything. And that is the most hilariously obvious goal that anyone could set for any blaster, and somehow this blaster came really close to genuinely being able to do everything. I'll explain any technicalities this blaster is facing later. First, let's start with the design. It looks insanely cool, and I love this design way too much. This is a design that seems nostalgic like the original Elite Blue, but there's just something so nice about it. It's so nice looking, and at the same time, so rustic looking like it's already been through a ton of wars and that is because of the weathering job that's been done to it which essentially just means trying to make the blaster look old but the blaster itself has been sprayed with three coats of rust-oleum black and then three coats of rust-oleum metallic blue which gives it this beautiful glittery sheen to it which is kind of hard to see you can see it right there it actually is reflective and very very pretty and a lot of extra details have been hand painted on like the nerf logo this orange right here these silver pieces right here and the cut custom nameplates, which can be found on both sides of the plastic because Phase 1 Foam isn't supervisor and actually cares about the quality of his blaster. This blaster was created by Nikon Owl, and as you can see, he put his little logo right here as a lanyard looking thing, and that's why this blaster is so rattly because that rattles around. I apologize in advance if that ends up making a lot of noise. I can't really help it, and I'm not going to take this thing off. Let's talk about the ergonomics. It's a strife. There's really nothing to say here. If you've used an original Strife, you already know exactly how this is going to feel with one additional detail. Obviously, same Strife grip, but with this thing on the front. This is a 3D printed foregrip that you guys might remember from my Straven video. It takes the front of Strife and... <laughs> okay, so the foregrip is not held on very well. This is just an attachment that was 3D printed, so that doesn't really count for this <laughs> I can't take this review seriously. Put that out. Put that <laughs> no, out. we're not cutting that out. We're leaving this in. <laughs> This foregrip has gone with Phase 1 Foam on every single primary Strife Blaster that he's ever used, and it continues with this one. And as always, it is a very nice handhold to put your hand, very slim, and it just kind of blends in with the blaster's design and looks pretty good. So how does this blaster work? Well, at the moment, it's only compatible with Talon magazines or any short dart magazine that you can get to fit in this particular magwell. You put your magazine in, you pull the rev trigger to rev it up, and then you pull the main trigger to fire one dart at a time, semi-automatic. <laughs> Let's talk about the triggers before we talk about the elephant in the room. So this blaster has four triggers. Four. I will explain why there's four triggers in just a second. But first we have the main trigger, the rev trigger, the first mag release, and the talon mag release. The rev trigger is very snappy because armor on micro switch like most of these mods. And as you can see it revs up pretty fast. The main trigger, yeah it's good. It's really good. It's really, really nice. It's, it really is really that good. I just accidentally revved the blaster, you get the point. The trigger is really good. As for the main mag release, there hasn't been any change from an original Strife. It's just as smushy as the original Strife's mag release. But you're not gonna be using it because this blaster is kind of not all together these days. And that is why this is in there right now because there's wiring that gets in the way of the mag well if you take this off. So the Talon mag adapter has to stay in to keep that from happening. Yes, it's a bit of an annoyance, but whatever. As for the mount Talon mag release, yep, it's a Talon mag release. If you've used it, you know how it feels. It's very nice and responsive and it's a paddle style. Also, here's an interesting fact. If you open the jam door, you can see that there's a screen with numbers on it. And if you rev the blaster up, it tells you what voltage the battery is at at the current time. <laughs> Thank you.
and then as you turn it off, the, the light fades from its eyes because it wasn't wired up properly, and that's not really a bad thing, it's just a very weird thing. Yeah. Okay, so I know what you guys are thinking. What on earth is actually going on here? Because so far this blaster just seems like Tesseract with a different color scheme and the fact that it uses short lengths instead of full lengths. Well, it's simple. This blaster has customizable FPS, which comes in the form of two flywheel cages that can be swapped out. The cage that is currently in this blaster is a tsunami cage with inferno wheels using Fang revamped motors and it's hitting 136 odd FPS. The other cage that is compatible with this blaster is a daybreak cage with daybreak wheels using Kraken motors running off a 3S LiPo rather than the 2S that this cage is running off of, and that cage is getting an average of 180 feet per second, a whole lot more than the 136 that's coming from this cage. So theoretically, this blaster could be used in high performance PvP and HVZ at any given time without having to change the blaster out, just the flywheel cages and the LiPo that's being used which is honestly one of the coolest things ever and really should be a standard with a lot of different blasters. Unfortunately, I can't show the firing demo of this blaster using the 180 FPS motors, but luckily we have a phase one foam who already filmed a firing demo of those motors, so I'll just play his clip when I get to the firing demo. With that said, now let's get on to the firing demo. So this blaster is unreasonably cool. Even just as a standalone blaster right here, ignoring all the swappable cage stuff, it is a solid build. It is nicely painted, it's comfortable, it's well done, it works well, it shoots well. The grouping is unbelievably tight for a flywheeler. Even at engagement distance, like from this side of the room to that side of the room, the groupings are insane out of this blaster. Plus little things like the voltmeter and all of the extra stuff like the swappable cages, it just makes this blaster as close to the perfect semi-automatic blaster as you can reasonably get. And if the problem is fixed where you can put in full length mags that would just hammer it home and honestly make this the best semi-automatic blaster I think has ever been made. While currently this blaster isn't perfect for absolutely everything, it's pretty close. And it's definitely the funnest flywheel blaster that I've used up to this point. It uh, completely destroys my Tesseract, so uh, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to Phase One Foam. He's an awesome guy, and I really think that all of you should go subscribe to his channel right now. He's sitting on the couch over there flipping me off and making that stupid face that he likes to make, but he knows that you guys should subscribe too. So no. go subscribe if you want to see this blaster more. Thanks for watching. Bye.